How you doing, everybody? Today, we're going to take a quick look at The Mummy, directed by Alex Kurtzman and starring Tom Cruise and Sofia Boutella. This is yet another reboot of Universal's The Mummy, and also a reboot of the entire Universal monster movie franchise, which they are now calling the Dark Universe. Butella plays Amenet, an ancient Egyptian princess who learns that she will not inherit her father's kingdom as she expected. This does not sit well with her, so she makes a pact with Set, the god of death, at least in this movie. I don't think he's actually supposed to be the god of death in real Egyptian mythology, but... Oh well. And she murders her entire family while they sleep. She then tries to bring Set into this world in human form, but sadly Gerard Butler was not available, and she was caught in the act and mummified alive for her crimes. Fast forward a few years, and her tomb has been discovered by a pair of grave robbers played by Tom Cruise and Jake Johnson, and an archaeologist played by Annabelle Wallace. They inadvertently resurrect Dominette, and she goes on a path of death and destruction, and it's up to Tommy to stop her. So I know I'm a little late to the party on this one. I was actually planning to see this movie last week, but I was too busy being sick. Now that I'm healthy again, I was finally able to give it a watch. Not worth the wait, let me tell you. I mean, it wasn't quite as bad as I expected, considering the reviews, but... It was still bad. And considering this movie is supposed to launch a new franchise, well, a new version of an old franchise, really, they are not off to a good start, especially considering the legacy they have to live up to. Going back to the classic Mummy with Boris Karloff, who was such an intimidating presence, and the Brendan Fraser movies, which were more action comedy rather than horror, but still, a lot of fun. Well, two of them. And in the 2017 movie, there is so much that really does not work. There are times when it feels like they're kind of trying to make an action comedy movie similar to what they did with the Fraser movies, but the problem is they are really bad at comedy. Johnson in particular, who basically plays Tom Cruise's comedy sidekick, was criminally unfunny. And I don't know that he's entirely to blame for that because I've seen him in other things and I know he can be funny, but this script just did not give him anything to work with. His dialogue was insufferable. And Tom Cruise is horribly miscast. This type of character, the dashing thief in need of redemption, is just not a good fit for him. And I get the feeling this part was originally written for someone about 20 years younger, but they're still trying to convince us that this guy is 20 years younger than he actually is. And it's not working. I mean, Cruise has aged well, Remarkably well, but he still aged. And we noticed, believe me, we noticed. There's a point in this movie where Russell Crowe, who I'll get to in a bit, but Russell Crowe actually calls him a younger man. Younger? Motherfucker, you look about the same age. In fact, in real life, I think Cruz is two years older. And Wallace, oh... Poor Wallace. She seemed like she was going to play such a good character at first. Strong, beautiful, intelligent, and completely unwilling to put up with one ounce of Tom Cruise's bullshit. I really liked her at the start of this movie, but then, once the mummy was resurrected, she just got shoved into the background and was relegated to playing the love interest slash damsel in distress. From that point on, she barely qualifies as a player in this story. She's pretty much just along for the ride. In fact, I think she actually got dumber as the movie went on. This is a minor spoiler, but I figure at this point, if you haven't seen the movie already, you're probably not going to. But she works for some secret society that basically hunts down monsters. And at some point, they actually capture Amonet, the mummy, but of course she inevitably gets away, and while she's making her escape and generally destroying shit, Cruz and Wallace are trying to run away, and there's a point where Cruz says, which way out? And she says, I don't know! You don't know? Bitch, what do you mean you don't know? You work here! This is your actual place of employment and you don't know where the fucking exit is? Are you kidding me right now? It's almost like this movie went, sorry, we can only support one strong female character at a time, and the title character just woke up, so back of the line with ya. What the fuck happened? And speaking of the title character, 
Butella is actually one of the high points here. She is a very compelling presence and does a really good job with this movie, despite the story's best efforts to hold her back. For the first half of this movie, she is awesome, even though her character's backstory doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I still don't understand why she needed to make a pact with Set just to slit a few throats. Like, I think you could have done that on your own. But for a while, she's awesome, until about halfway through the movie when Russell Crowe shows up as Dr. Jekyll, really, and briefly as Mr. Hyde, and he's supposed to be the leader of this secret society of monster hunters, which is basically the Dark Universe equivalent of S.H.I.E.L.D., and suddenly the mummy is thrown into the background while the movie basically becomes the Cruise and Crow show. The title character becomes a background player. What the hell? It's almost like it becomes a completely different movie at that point. And to be fair, Crow is pretty awesome in this movie as well. He seems to know he's in a complete mess of a film, but he just doesn't care. And honestly, I kind of want to see a Jekyll and Hyde movie with him. But anyway, eventually the mummy breaks free of her bonds and starts wrecking shit, but that's the point when she basically starts pulling a new superpower out of her ass every five minutes. Can we please figure this out, writers? What exactly is she capable and not capable of? Figure it out, keep it consistent. Is that too much to ask? But then this movie did have three different screenwriters, so how consistent can it possibly be? I really have to wonder which one of the three wrote the first half, which one wrote the second half, and who was the poor sap that they hired to tie the two pieces together and try to make them make sense? I pity that guy. And then there's the ending, and I really don't know what was up with that. Without giving too much away, although I really don't know how much I can give away, even if I want to, but Cruz's character undergoes some sort of transformation, but I'm really not sure what exactly he transformed into. It's not really made clear. The only thing I know for sure is they plan on keeping him around for future movies, provided they do well enough that they can afford his salary in the future, which I don't know, because it looks like this movie is going to underperform. I don't know that it's necessarily going to bomb, because the foreign box office may end up saving it. Domestically, though, whoo, not good. The movie does have some things working in its favor, namely Butella and Crow, but that's really not enough to warrant seeing this in theaters. I can't even recommend it to people who like watching bad movies, because it's not even the fun kind of bad. It's just the uninteresting kind of bad. Maybe you could give it a watch when it pops up on cable, but that's as far as I'm willing to go. And that's about it for the latest incarnation of The Mummy. Till next time, take care.